Hello again and welcome to another special episode of Darkology. 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 Today's topic's gonna be a good one. You're gonna love it. Hang on, puppet. I think it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Puppet Strings, Puppet Strings, here to take over this sanctuary for the meantime. So, without any further ado, let's thrill, chill, and fulfill you with ten strange creatures lurking in the pops and static of those silent gems long since dying. Number ten, Flower. Flower is said to be a beautiful girl that wanted to go places in the movies. However, in 1917, on August 9th, this girl had been found floating in the nearby river. No one could identify her. Her name, identity, etc. had vanished. And so, her body it seemed. Her lifeless body had disappeared along with everything else. Yet, during the filming of the most famous silent movie, Nosferatu, Greta Schroeder, who played Mina Murray, had re reported strange sightings in her dressing room during the film. She whispered that it had been a spirit that haunted her. With further research, the girl who had drowned in the river was supposed to get Greta Schroeder's part. And still to this day, at certain times at the film, you can see a dark figure standing at particular times during the movie. So I ask all of you, can you find Waldo? Number nine, Ilio. Ilio is actually an animal, a dog, appearing in random silent films. During one short that had been scrapped called The Love, a black dog had ripped the throat out of the lead director, and since then, this dog has been sighted on a set of numerous random movies, such as, for example, Poltergeist and The Exorcist. And just like your typical demonic Fido, if he bites you, you will die in a week. Makes you wonder if you could claim him on your taxes. Huh. Number 8. Gregory. Like so many spirits, demons, etc. They have a reason for the way they are, but Gregory does not seem to have a reason for the way he is. He appears as an old man, homeless might I add, with amputated legs. He asks for change, and if you give him some, you must ask for his story. He will tell you interesting adventures from all over the world, but you must stop him six minutes before midnight. If you don't, he will attack you. But where does he come from? Well, according to the California Police Department, he was a stagehand and a prop handler during the silent film Phantom of the Opera with Lon Chaney. A prop landed on his body and sliced through his legs. The crew did not help him, and they actually left him there, until someone found him. He is back for revenge, the descendants of the film crew state. Honestly, puppets, I'd be back for my paycheck. Life is hard, you know? Number 7. Jerry. Jerry was a small-town boy with a lot of promise. Unlike most, he didn't have a dream of going into the movies. He did want to become a playwright, though. He was picked up by a play arranger, and he eventually went to Broadway. His dreams changed, and he did want to make movies after all. He had his money at that point, so it was quite easy for him to go into it. While taking the train, he traveled across country to Hollywood land. But barely even a quarter into his trip, his train ran off its rails due to a mistake in its construction. He survived, but had third-degree burns from head to toe. His career was ruined, according to his appearance. But he still found his way into Hollywood and was turned down by the lead men. He always had a knife on him, and this time, he used it. Twisting the knife into one of the lead men's jugular, he was proclaimed mentally unstable due to his injuries. He killed himself in the California Mental Institute, which is now shut down. Every time someone tries to take a photograph or catch the abandoned institute on film, it is distorted. How offensive. We all just wanted to take a proper selfie with an insane person. Number six, the pig. The pig 
has been quite the sensation on the internet. But my darling contacts have stated something very disturbing. This pig was obviously a costume, but the man in the costume was a pedophile, to say the least whom attacked 13 children. Escaping out of the terrible reality of that branch, after the pedophile passed away in 1992, the costume had been moving about as if it were alive. But due to unknown reasons, the costume has been moved to a museum and children under the age of 10 have had their ears bleed. Well, I believe there's two words for this pig. Fuck you. Number 5. Hegel Hegel is a creature lurking in most silent films, but one in particular, particular, what is seen through the keyhole. A two minute long film from 1901, quite ahead of its time for that era. It has a backstory of a janitor that enjoys peeking through the keyholes of his guest room, but in the original theater to where it was shown, had an extended version which made the film an extra five minutes long, and in this three minutes, the janitor peeked through an additional keyhole which one of his female guests happened to be stabbing a youthful beauty. The extended tape reel had been removed from the cinemas as 427 people had had heart attacks from watching such a spectacle. You will not be able to find the original tape by the oh-so-creative Ferdinand Zecca as the extended tape reel has been discarded, and now the only trace of the original tape is Hegel, which is believed to be the woman who stabbed the youth. This woman is depicted in the two-minute version as a lady trying to make herself more attractive, and has been also theorized as a man in the original film. Ah, I see. <sighs> it is the original toddlers and tiaras, but this happens to be their great-grandmothers. Number four, dark eyes. This has nothing to do with eyes hardly at all, but simply with the audio. The pops and the white noise in very common in silent movies. However, Dark Eyes is something entirely different. It is said that Dark Eyes is responsible for most people of the time going deaf. They have no rhyme or reason for that, but simply anger. There is no telling when and or where this creature will strike, but when it does, it will be too late for coffee. Nothing is wrong with having a little blood coffee. Number three, film EXE. Very self-explanatory, along many others being terribly dangerous. This one has no sign of being hostile. Film EXE is believed to be a sort of leech attacking one's mental state to where they mentally find movies from the era quote-unquote creepy. Now, yes, that can be explained away as a simple emotion from the human organ we call a brain. However, scientists at the UCSF Neurology Center have deduced that film EXE is indeed a sort of pest haunting nearly every silent film and chooses to become a parasite to kill certain people, kind of like politics. Number two, poor, poor Yvette, such a little lady with big dreams she'll never get. Miss Yvette was a bright-eyed 19-year-old in 1920s New Orleans. She sold her body, she ran moonshine, just to make her dreams come true. When she performed an audition, little Yvette didn't get picked for the part. Later the same day, she slit her wrists and bled out into the street. And if one happens to strut down a particular alleyway, which some of my contacts do not even know which it is, they will see her standing in a pool of her own blood, whispering over and over, Number one, letter to a friend. Technically, this is a video game, but with the help of some context and description alone, we'll pick this apart. On the website Game Jolt, their description is thus. Letter to a friend is a short person experience about the unspeakable horror that creeps up on you at a nighty train station. Its visual references come from silent movies and old analog recordings. Though, as one would expect, it is a simple horror game with creepy touches. However, my sources have claimed that this is no mere horror game but a portal of sorts. Perhaps it is a portal to a sub-universe. What the hell? Well, dearest puppets, I hope this opens up your eyes to the grainy entertainment we know as silent movies. It has been a pleasure working with all of you, but for now, I will catch some of you later. You have been such a great audience, and sleep tight, my puppets.